Yeah, deal with YouTube. This is Melissa Marie here again with another video. Today I'm going to be showing you what I eat in a day. So here you can see me cutting up some frozen bananas. It was kind of a struggle. I didn't really think it through how hard it would be to cut up the bananas, but I am prepping myself for an acai bowl. I have these little packets from Sambozan brand, which I get from Target. I don't get them too often because they're actually pretty expensive, but whenever I feel like I want some acai, I do that. I add in some peaches, some dragon fruit, and then I have a cherry berry blend that I get from Target, Good & Gather brand. I really enjoy that brand. Then I add in some water, about half cup. I put it on my bullet to blend. The Magic Bullet is one of my favorite purchases that I have right now. After I blend it, then I add in about a tablespoon and a half of hemp seeds. I love the hemp seeds for the purposes of omega fatty acids, of course, since I am plant-based. And then I just let that blend up a little bit more. Then you see me about to prepare my bowl. So my boyfriend was going to work, so I just made his in a cup for him to go. I add some light agave for a little bit of a sweeter flavor. And then I chop up some bananas to garnish it. Next, I will add in some blueberries. It really just depends on what I'm feeling in the moment. The bowl had kind of a berry-ish taste, so I just added in some blueberries, added in some chia seeds, and then a few pieces of coconut. And voila, you have an acai bowl. These are really, really good for you. I don't know when acai took off in the United States like it did, I guess a few years ago, but um, super berry from Brazil. Next, you're gonna see me make dinner, which is for tonight, I'm making curry chickpeas. I start off with my potatoes. Of course, you gotta get the skin off and everything. Please don't judge the way that I chop up my fruits and veggies because I'm not an expert. I take my time to cut through the potatoes and then I dice them up into kind of chunky cubes. I don't make them really, really small because I like to actually taste my potatoes when I'm cooking them. I don't want them to break apart and get um, too saturated so that they fall apart. And just preparing my mise en place. Just quickly rinse off my cutting board and my knife in between cooking anything just in case I have to use it again so that I don't cross contaminate. Here I'm starting my electric behind stove. It's a struggle, but it's what we have to work with for right now. Adding in some water into the pot and then adding in some rice. Then I realized that I did not wash out my rice. I usually like to rinse through my rice until it gets to the point where the water runs clear before I start cooking with it. So I go ahead and put it back on the stove. Then I add in some salt, pink salt, white salt, a little bit of pepper, some olive oil, and allow my rice to start boiling. Put the cover on. Next, I'm gonna chop up an onion and also some garlic. but I chop up the onion, but I don't really want a super fine dice. I wanna feel the texture of my onions when I'm cooking, so I just work through them. Next, I add some grapeseed oil to the pan, let it get hot. Then I throw my onions in there and simmer them down. I didn't feel like chopping up the garlic, so I just went ahead and got some minced garlic out the fridge and let the two of them cook together. I don't add the garlic in right away. I wait until the onions sweat a little bit. 
here you see me showing you my curry powder which we keep in a mason jar but it's the better pot brand which is a jamaican brand i make sure to coat my onions and garlic all the way then i add in some seasonings i add in some adobo which is required in everything i cook Then I get my chickpeas ready. I use two cans of chickpeas and I'm going to be adding in some coconut milk in a second. I have to open up my chickpeas and then, then I rinse them out from whatever the stuff they keep them in in the can. I add my chickpeas to the pan and then I make sure I coat them completely in the curry. So I take some time here. This can be like a five minute process where I make sure I scrape the pan and get them all completely coated and seasoned with what I had the onions cooking in. Next, I add some water and the coconut milk into the pot. I add in some thyme and then I close it and let it cook for a bit for about 20 minutes. I completely forgot to add ginger to my curry, which is a super huge mistake. You never want to forget to put ginger in your curry unless you want to have a washout. And by washout, I mean crazy poop. So here I'm just checking my rice. I went into the fridge to grab some vegan butter to put it into the rice because my boyfriend likes buttery rice. So I just put that in, put the top back on, and then I just mixed around my chickpeas a little bit. At this point, I'm going to add in my potatoes. And after I finish adding my potatoes, I wanna make sure to work them into the curry as well so that they're completely coated. I like to add in the potatoes after the chickpeas because the chickpeas take longer to cook and I don't want my potatoes to get too softy softy. Like I don't like it when it like it's mashed potatoes and it falls apart. I want it to hold its structure. So I'm gonna add in some crushed red pepper Ooh, she's looking good. She's looking good. But I need to allow that to reduce for a little bit more. So I just leave the lid off for a little bit. So while the rest of that is finished cooking, I'm gonna start the coleslaw. I have a bag of coleslaw that I got from Sprout and I just put a little bit into a bowl. I add in some vegan mayo, a healthy serving because I really do love mayo. I'm working on it, y'all. And then I added in some chipotle dressing, which it was okay. It could have done without it, but I just wanted to try something new, so I did. I mixed that in really, really well to make sure I got all the cabbage pieces. And my coleslaw is complete. So now I just have to go back and finish up with my curry. I leave the top off so that it can reduce for a bit. I like to add in golden raisins into my curry chickpeas. It's something that my boyfriend used to do and I really, really love it. It just creates a savory sweet taste that you never knew you needed, like to be honest. It's really, really good. So I go ahead and mix that in really, really nice. And as you can see, the curry has thickened and it looks pretty much ready to go. I don't know why it's translating on the camera so, so yellow, but it is a little bit more mustard uh, to, to orange than it looks on camera. It's not that light. Rice looks to be done. And that is it for this meal. I'm just giving myself a little bit for dinner. Don't laugh at my little plate, y'all. I'm on a diet. So I just put a little bit of rice, a little bit of curry chickpeas, and a teeny bit of coleslaw. We got goals to make out here, guys. We trying to get these gains. So I'm keeping my plates small so that I don't overeat. But yes, this is what I eat in the day. Generally, I try to keep it to one or two meals in a day while I'm on this period of trying to lose weight and tone up. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and put in the comments anything else you would like to see me make a video about. Alright guys, look more.